Hey everyone, and welcome to the last video in this series, Disney Song Statistics Part 5, A and B, Core Types to Plenty. So yeah, I had to split this one into two videos because it got to be too long and my editing freeware has a really lame, crashy memory cache. So, you know, but okay, last quick reminder, if you want to skip the expo and go straight to the spreadsheets and charts, go here. Okay, so how does one make statistics out of chord types? Well, first thing we got to do is figure out how many types there even are and what they are. And yeah, that's probably too hard to do since there's hundreds of them, perhaps thousands. So if we want to do it in a way that gets us something that fits in a graph that we can talk about, we're going to have to narrow our parameters. And the long short of how I'm going to do that in this video is by limiting the tallies to the basic chord triad. And when it comes to this limitation, you know, it's like, how can I possibly lump all the tetrads and pentads and dodecahedrads out there in with their boring old basic root triads? Would you reduce da Vinci to finger paints? <laughs> and I mean, yeah, I agree. The <laughs> simplification is not ideal. But to get the comprehensive gist of what chords are used and how often are they used, triads will just have to do for now. Someday, when the technology and, you know, time allows, I'm sure someone will come along and do a macro study allowing for all chords, like all the chord type inversions, extensions, and suspensions of all the triads and beyond. But yeah, trust me, gathering data on just triads is hard enough. So until we have better computers or better dystopian music theory student slaves to help us out with their slave labor, um, you know, triads will just have to do. Okay, so then, how many chord triads are there even out there? Well, to start, we gotta know that in Western music there are 12 notes. Da -da -da. Um, and four kinds of triads. You've got major, minor, diminished, and augmented. This translates into 12 major chords, 12 minor chords, plus 12 diminished chords, and then four augmented chords. Okay, whoa, 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 rewind. Why only four augmented triad types when the rest have 12? Here's why, without going into too much detail, it's because any augmented triad you play is going to have the same notes in it as any of the other two augmented triads out there with the same notes. <laughs> okay, they'll just be different inversions of each other. And let me just real quick try to explain to you what I mean by that. So like a C augmented has the same notes as an E augmented, which has the same notes as a G sharp augmented, three and one. And I mean, maybe if people actually use documented chords in their songs more often, then it might have been worth it to separate them out by their 12 roots, but they just aren't really used that much, and I didn't want them taking up space in my graph, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it is, and it's really not something that we should lose any sleep over. Okay, speaking of usage, I did include two tetrads, that's four note chords, as honorary triad types because of how often they are used. The one with the seven, the dominant seven, and the four with a dominant seven. And so I'll, you know, with the seven, I'll be using a seven as a chord label. Oh, and it's important to note that their chord triads are just the one and the four. Two of the most common triads. Um, so what makes these chords worthy of being separated out into their own chord types for inclusion in the study is both how they function and how frequent they are, how often they're used. Uh, but anyways, you can make up your own mind whether I should have included these chords. And also maybe if I should have included any other four note chords um, or three note chords that aren't triads um, that you were missing. But Let's get into that after we wrap up. For now, it's a subjective choice I'm making based on the fact um, that they're cool chords and I want you to know about them so that maybe you could use them in your music. Um, so there, uh, let's move on. Okay, so all together then we're gonna tally up and count 42 common chord types and see how often each was used in our sampling of Disney songs. I mean, 42, right? It's like the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything, right? But anyways. <laughs> Uh, one more thing to explain before we dive in. I want to talk all about how these chords are going to be described as being in a chromatically fixed system, which means all chord labels are based off of any one of the 12 notes relative to the key and nothing but the key. How this works is that I'm going to give all the triads with their roots not in the major scale a flat. So like in the key of C, it's the black notes. Flat 2, flat 3, flat 5, flat 6, flat 7. Boop, boop, boop. And yeah, Obviously, this will mainly affect chords not in major. And also the five of five chord labels will have to go, as uh, I'll just be labeling them by their roots instead of, of, of five slashies. We have to transpose in your head what the chord is. So for example, all five of five chords, and all two major chords, 
or it's labeled, you know, two major, Roman, capital Roman number two, uh, no matter their function. And then going back to the fixed flats labeling, a diatonic three chord in minor key and a flat three major chord in a major key are both labeled flat three major. This fixed sampling, I believe, is the most comprehensive way to do it because when we're collecting samples from all the tonalities, um, we can't rely on tonal context. So it's my belief, at least for what we're doing here, that swifter comprehension of what a chord is is more important than knowing what a chord is supposed to do or its function. But yeah, just making it clear that I'm not in any way against functional labeling, which often explains music in a much better way, but only when it's in context and you can assume certain things. Okay, if you'd like further explanations of why I do it this way, please watch my last chord type statistic videos or my chord aesthetics intro video. All right, computer time. Let's hop in. Okay, first up, here's a graph showing the total triad types used per Disney song. And like I said four videos ago, Disney songs use a plethora of chord triad types. I mean, look at this. Three to five chord songs are actually less common than six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve chord songs, with the highest number of songs using eight, ten, and twelve chord triad types. I mean, when like me, you're used to operating within the world of pop music. This is just nuts. And look over here. A couple of songs even used eighteen triad types without falling off a cliff. It's like when you consider that most tonalities only even have six or seven diatonic triads in the first place, it's then you realize just how incredible the songwriting is. Here, if you don't believe me, let's real quick revisit the Rolling Stone 500 graph of the same parameters. We see here it's three to five chord songs that are king. And there ain't much at all past the six or seven chord songs. Man. One minor similarity to point out, though, uh, between these two graphs is that the four chord songs column did outdo its neighbors, three and five chord songs, in both studies. Let's go back and look. See, look at that. No contest. Four wins out over three and five. And yeah, because of this, as well as our winners over here at eight, ten, and twelve, I'd like to start a conspiracy theory that songs with an even number of chord types per song are inherently more common than songs with an odd number of chord triads. I mean, even 18 chord songs outdid 17 chord songs. So yeah, maybe it's some kind of consonance, dissonance, binary, something or other, but, but yeah, I think I'll just be wearing my tinfoil hat on this one for a while. Join me or don't. All right, next we save the best chart in the series for last, overall chord type usage. Okay, let's run down the types real quick on the left here. And if you already get these numerals and want to get straight to the tidbits, you can skip ahead to the whole next video, Disney Chord Types of Plenty, Part B. Um, here's a link to that, here. Okay, now, so we can hear what these guys sound like as I'm going through them, I'll be playing all these types in the key of C. And if I ever sing one out, I'll try and play a C root beforehand so you can get an idea of how they sound relative to the key uh, they're in their tonal center. Okay, first I got my major diatonics in blue, and they sound like this. Uh, one is major, da, 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 two minor, da, 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 three minor, da, 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 four major, da, 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 five, da, 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 six is minor, da, 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 and seven is diminished. Um, and before I played that, I probably should have explained that the light blue portion of the bar here, all the lighter colored bars really, they represent chords tallied during modulations. So like whenever a song switched tonal center and a chord type was repeated in the new key. So there's that in case you find that useful. I did. Anyways, moving on, I got my minor diatonics in yellow and they sound like this. And then my tonal center and there's the one minor. And then the two is diminished in minor. And then three. Remember it's flat three I'm calling it because this is a fixed system. And then, then four minor, five minor, flat six, and da, da, da. that's flat seven right there. And um, next, secondary dominants are purple. This is where I put those honorary triads, the one seven and uh, four seven. And I hope that now that you see it like this all in a row and whatnot, it makes more sense why they got their spot. Anyways, here's how they sound relative to the soul center. We got da, da, da. Is that one seven, na, na, na. and here's the two, and, na, na, na. and then three, na, na, na. and then four with a seven, and then it's 
got to skip five, obviously, because you can't have a dominant of itself. Um, and then uh, eight major, da, 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 seven. Um, okay, next augmented triads are in green, and they sound like this. Here is the one augmented, which is also a three augmented, and a flat six augmented. And then next, um, our little subgroup is a flat two augmented, which is also a four and a six. And then a two augmented, sounds like that. Da, 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 boom. Forgot to give you the tone center there. And also flat five and flat six, or flat seven, I'm sorry. And last subgroup into these, we got flat three. Which is also a five and a seven augmented. Oops. Bop, 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 bop. Um. Yeah. Oh, please also notice on the left here that I ordered the chords by name according to which ones were used more often, which I hope sort of makes up for my lumping them together with their inversions. Also, I want to mention that some augmented types are missing completely because only eight of the possible twelve augmented chords were even to be found in this study. And I mean, augmented chords that contain the second scale degree, the flat five and the flat seven, were missing entirely, hence the uh, two augmented in parentheses. Okay, don't fall asleep. We've got to get through this. Okay, diminished chords are in red, and I won't play these right now because one, I'm lazy, and two, diminished chords sound really aggravating when they don't resolve like they're supposed to, usually up a half step from one of their notes. Some people call these secondary leading tone chords, which is kind of like a secondary dominant chord, but just less predictable. There are also sometimes these things called uh, common tone, diminished chords. Uh, these don't sound all that great out of context either. But yeah, if you're a songwriter and you don't use these common tone, diminished chords, or these secondary leading tone, diminished guys, you should start because they can be way cool. And Okay, actually, I lied. Here, I'll play some after all. So it's like, you know, you can be on the five. And then you secondary leading tone to the six. And you gotta play a four and then a one because you're so fly. Um, and then, like for common tone ones, you know, it can be like, da, 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 I'm at the ballet, or like at the end of you know one song in Greece, they're like, um, okay. Last, we have what I like to call uh, miscellaneous chords in orange. These are the leftovers that don't often belong to any commonly referred to diatonic or borrowed or secondary schemes. They just kind of you know do their own thing when they do it at all. Um, and they sound like this. So we got flat two major, flat five major, and then a bunch of these minors here. You got da, 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 flat two minor, da, 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 flat three minor, da, 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 flat five minor, and you could put a minor on the flat um, six and the flat seven, and also the uh, minor chord on the seven itself. Da, da, da. A lot of minors, man. Quick, somebody write a thesis. Uh, just kidding. Okay, well that's the end of Disney Chord Types of Plenty, Part 5A. In Part 5B, we're going to go back and really dig into what's going on, point out some cool tidbits, and do some comparisons. If you're watching on YouTube, you can click here to go to the next video, or if you're at the TonalTrends.com website, you can see the next video directly below the one that you're watching now. Either way you do it, hurry back.